You know, I've been a photographer most of my life. I actually started out as a pro when I was 12 because that's when I actually sold my first photograph. And uh, I've managed to shoot photographs all over the world and capture some pretty crazy places. Now, my tree house, you know, as a little kid, I had a tree house. And this isn't too dramatic, but there's something cool about a tree house. And one of the things you do as a photographer is you find unique angles and different places to shoot from. Because if you're always shooting from the same angle all the time, it's probably going to be boring. So <laughs> look for places that you can find like this that give you a different perspective. What I want to talk about today, what I want to address right here, is the conflict that a lot of us run into in photography. And there's a couple of parts to it. One is, what do you shoot? You know, let's face it, some days you're inspired and some days it's just like a blank. Like, what do you shoot on those blank days? And how do you get motivated? But I'll tell you, what's the biggest enemy to your photography is the critic. You know, there's actually two parts to who and what the critic is. It could actually be a person you know that criticizes your work, like an actual critic. Somebody who just sits there and yap, 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 yap. They don't construct, they destruct. Those people are incredibly destructive to any creative endeavor. But there's another part of criticism, and that is what goes on in your own head. You know those like nagging doubts and you go, was that good enough? Or it really wasn't good enough. It sucks. <laughs> My photographs suck. That mental conflict and the actual critic are the things that can get in the way of your own photography. What we're going to do here is take a look at this and I want to help you be a better photographer. It's not as far as I'm concerned about the equipment and I'm going to prove that to you in a in a exercise that we're going to do. Yes you do need to know your equipment and you need to know how to operate it backwards and forwards. There's no question about that. But what really is important, and this goes back as far as man has been scratching stuff on cave walls, is how you tell that story. Like what you tell and how you tell it to engage your, your audience. Whether it's a fellow caveman, you know, Ugga Bugga, or <laughs> you're using, <laughs> using Instagram or Facebook or you're ideally displaying your work somewhere. You want to show what you saw, what you felt, and pass that along to somebody else. So you know what? I've done a whole kind of a research on this, and I found there's really only two things that you really, really, really have to know to get your story across. What are those two things? The two skills are, one, composition, Composition just means how you use the frame of your camera to put your subject in. Okay, and there's lots of different ways to do that. We could probably go as high as a hundred, you know, very, very well defined different ways to set up the image in your camera. That's composition. The second thing is lighting, natural lighting. So right now we have a hazy day. It's giving us a softbox effect. The sun is just now starting to come through here. But there's a lot of different lighting techniques. You know, you've got the golden hours, you've got the blue hour that happens after the golden hours. You've, you've got, what do you do like right now in midday, you know? So those are the things that my new book I'm actually delving into. And I want your help. I want to have you help me help you by giving me your feedback and your questions. Like, what do you want to know about composition and lighting? Getting back to this uh, enemy thing that gets in the way of your creativity. So there's two possibilities. One, you're listening to critics. Don't do that, throw that out the window, just don't listen to them. Uh, by the way, there's a difference between a critic and a coach. 
A coach is somebody who gives you actual feedback that you can make an improvement with. Dude, it's out of focus. <laughs> you know, it's like, I remember some of my earliest photographs, I had a, a mentor, you know, and he would, he, would, he would actually type notes on the back of my prints. He'd print them for me and then he typed his notes. Kind of amazing, I still have those. But he'd, he'd put a note in there like, what would have happened if you took one step closer? Which by the way is usually good advice. One of the big differences between an amateur and a pro photograph is the pro will take that one more step in and the amateur sort of stays back outside and kind of hovers on the edge and doesn't really get involved in the photograph. Okay, that's coaching. That's not criticism. It's telling you something that you can definitely improve and usually just focusing on one thing at a time. Okay, critic just throws out and you know, it's just, they're there to destroy. They're not there to construct. However, there's a second point. Maybe your photographs do need to be improved and your photography skills need to be upped. We all have to do that constantly and learn new things. And I'm here to teach you those things. So watch my videos and get inspired by listening to these pros and also listen to how they approach photography. Don't forget, you get a copy of this book. The reason I wrote it is because I wanted to give you a handbook that covered the entire range of photography from beginning to end. Remember that it's called a cycle of photography and it starts with visualization at the center which means you getting in your mind how you envision the photograph to be shot. Just like this. You know I kind of visualized wouldn't it be kind of fun to climb up in the tree and and said Alexander let's go out and just Climb the tree. That's a visualization. You get the idea in your own mind. How you strengthen your visualization is you can look at others' work, get ideas from them, not to copy it, but to get inspired. Joey L., fantastic photographer, told me, you know, he got his inspiration for his lighting and composition from looking at the masters. Same thing with Bob Holmes looking at Vermeer, looking at lighting from various painters and artists that you can incorporate into your own photography. So that's the center of this whole thing. The next thing is you definitely do need to know your equipment. You got to know what it does. And I describe all the basics of a camera in here. But it doesn't matter whether you're using an expensive DSLR or a mirrorless or an iPhone or another smartphone. You've got a piece of equipment there that you need to know how to use. Third, third thing is uh, capture. And capture is where you're bl basically blending your use of the equipment with your vision. And again, remember I mentioned that capture boils down to composition and lighting. So I'm gonna delve deep into those things, but I cover, I cover them adequately in this book. And then the third, fourth thing okay, is uh, processing. So once you've captured it, you go into your Lightroom or Photoshop, whatever your software is, and you process it. And you, you take your vision and you turn it into exactly what you want by using your software. And the final step, the fifth step, is sharing your work. And this is where what we've just been talking about really comes into play. You share your work, your work you put it out there. And some people are afraid to share their work because they don't want it coming back at them. That's because there's some critic there or their own mind is going, yep, 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 yep. Tell that to shut up. And don't listen to either one of those things. Okay, so I want you guys to come along with me. We're making this new series for you to help you become a better photographer and help me help you. Again, I wanna hear your feedback. What do you wanna know about composition and lighting? What do you wanna know in general? Leave it in your comments down here, okay? And be sure to subscribe. <laughs> I'd love it if you share the video with your buddies. Leave your comments and your likes. And remember to get out and capture your own images of life. Mm -hmm.